Welcome back to The Person Everyone Needs. I am your host, Webb Hoggard, and today we're going to talk about love, the word love. There's a great book out there called The Five Love Languages, and uh, I, I don't know, many of you, if you hear me say that, the first thing that pops in your head, you're like, oh yeah, I've already... I know what love language I have. I, I'm this love language, which is the complete opposite of my spouse, which is you know often apparently what happens. And, and I'm not as much interested in you understanding uh, what your love language is, although that is helpful. It is good for you to know those things about yourself. But bigger than that, I think the the book, The Five Love Languages, teaches us what real love is. And we have got to keep that in front of us over and over and over again about what love really, really is. And so... Love is putting someone else in front of yourself. You know, but for some of you, that, that's not that big of a deal. And, and that's really what I want to talk to you today about is putting others ahead of yourself is not that big of a deal because you don't even give that much value to yourself. You know, there are people out there that are dramatically selfish. There are those people out there that literally they wake up every single day and they never have a thought about another human being. They only think of themselves. But that those people are are few and far between there are also those sweet, sweet people out there that understand their call from God and that they are, you know, designed by the hands of their maker and that they've been redeemed by the blood of the lamb and that their entire existence here is to go and help and serve and bless and do all that you can to pour out all that you have to help those in need. And those are a beautiful, beautiful part of humanity, but they are also, I feel like, are a pretty small group of our culture. I feel like most of us fall in the middle somewhere between those two extremes. And, and, and so I'm going to tell you today what I really think um, a lot of the issues with today is, is it, it doesn't stem from not actually caring more about others than ourselves. It's a, uh, it's a loathing of ourselves altogether. Most people that I come in contact with, they do not have a good opinion of themselves. Most people that I spend time with on the regular, they have little voices in their heads that, that dehumanize them, that remind them of their imperfections and how far they have fallen short. And it is not in some kind of spiritual convicted way. It is in a shaming, destructive way that people live on the regular, considering themselves to be unvaluable and and not realizing how valuable they are. And this is the very reason why when Jesus tells us, love your neighbor as yourself, one of the problems is you don't love yourself at all. So how in the world can you love your neighbor? The beginning of that is that you need to love yourself so that you can love your neighbor. And, and I'll just tell you, one of, the, one of the greatest stories I ever got was out of that book, Five Love Languages. And, and this is I want to give you a quick excerpt from it. George Crane tells of a wife who came into his office full of hatred toward her husband. She said, I do not only want to get rid of him, I want to get even. Before I divorce him, I want to hurt him as much as he has me. Dr. Crane suggested an ingenious plan. He said, go home and act as if you really love your husband. Tell him how much he means to you. Praise him for every decent trait. Go out of your way to be as kind, considerate, and generous as possible. Spare no efforts to please him, to enjoy him. Make him believe you love him. After you've convinced him of your undying love and that you cannot live without him, then drop the bomb. Tell him that you're getting a divorce. That will really hurt him. The revenge in her eyes, she smiled and exclaimed, Beautiful, beautiful. Will he ever be surprised? And she did it with enthusiasm, acting as if for two months she'd have showed love, kindness, listening, giving, reinforcing, sharing. When she didn't return, Crane called. Are you ready now to go through with the divorce? Divorce, she exclaimed. Never. I discovered I really do love him. Her actions had changed her feelings. Motion resulted in emotion. The ability to love is established not so much from fervent promise as often as repeated deeds. 
C.S. Lewis tells his readers to fake it until you make it, basically. Like, keep doing the things that the person you would want to be would be doing until eventually you enjoy doing those things, even while you don't do it. And, you know, at first your heart might not be in it, but your actions might actually change your heart. Let me just tell you right now, serving someone else will not only give you the opportunity to fulfill being a good friend, it will also give you the investment that you need to start falling in love with that person. Now, I'm talking about loving others right there, but let me just go back to what I was saying right before I told you that story. Some of you need to take time and love yourself. Now, I don't get weirded out by that phrase. I, I'm sure Justin Bieber's a song I uh, just threw in your brain or whatever, but uh, w- what I want you to understand, loving yourself, like just like the woman did in that story, you need to recognize what's good about you. Nobody else needs to affirm that, but can you do that? Can you can you affirm for a moment that there are things about you that are special? That without you, some things wouldn't be right, some things wouldn't be good, some things wouldn't be heading in the right direction? Do you contribute to your family in such a way that if you weren't there, things would be different, things would be worse? Take some time. Affirm yourself. Remind yourself that you have gifts, you are a blessing, you are helpful, that people around you need to know who you are. Because what I know about you is that you cannot love others if you don't give yourself a break. You can't give anybody else a break if you don't give yourself a break. You cannot serve others if you're not serving yourself ever. So, you know, I see people all the time, they'll be like, well, I just expect them to do what they're supposed to do because that's what I expect of myself. Well, first of all, like take it down a notch. All right. Take your perfection down. Go ahead and go ahead and turn that down a little bit because you may think to yourself, you're just holding everybody else to the same standard as, as you are, but maybe, maybe that standard is unlivable for you and it must be unlivable for everybody else. You need to take it easy. Well, I know a lot of us spend a lot of our times. Our worth is based on our usefulness But you are worthy of love. You are worthy of being served. You are worthy of being taken care of. You are worthy to be designed by the hands of God. You are worthy to be died for by Jesus Christ. So your worth is not in question. You are worthy. Do you recognize that? If Jesus thought you were worth his life, then aren't you worthy of love? I say that today because when Jesus told us, like the greatest commandment is love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself, You need to start by loving yourself. The first thing you've got to do is love God enough to love what he loves, and he loves you. Love God with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Love God enough to love yourself, and then you can love others. From the the reservoir of love that both comes from God, your love for God, and your love for yourself, then you can bless others. But if you keep your own personal tank low, no wonder you don't have anything to offer somebody else. Jesus also said that if you wanted to be a follower of him, the marker of how people will know that you are his is not by your faith, it is not by your hope, it is not by your service, it is not by how uh, many times you attend church, it's not your Sunday school, your Bible reading, it is not how much you can quote, it is not how much you can give. Do you want to know the thing that he said? He said, they will know you are mine by the way you love one another. You want to identify as one of God's people, one of Christ's uh, followers, one of his disciples, then first of all, You need to be somebody who values yourself enough to love yourself. And the second thing is that you love those inside the body of Christ with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength. That's how you know that you are identifying with Jesus. Jesus loves his church. So if you spend a lot of your time hating his church, I promise you, you're not going to be on the right side of that husband. Uh, Nobody that is close to me gets to bash my wife. And Jesus feels the same way about his church. And so don't be somebody who sits around and complains and and talks trash and dogs the very thing that Jesus gave his entire life for. Spend whatever time you can to love yourself enough to make it better. Okay? The last thing I want to tell you is that not only did he say, love your neighbor as yourself, and not only did he say that they will know you are mine by how you love each other, but right before Jesus left the earth, he said, to love one another as I have loved you. Now that is is a tall order. But again, we've got to start at the first step. 
the first thing you have to do. It, this is not some admonition to be like, get it straight and go love people and give everybody everything you got and then constantly just pour yourself out. No, Jesus is saying, first, you've got to let me love you. I, I want you to hear that. The person that everyone needs is someone who who doesn't love first, but is loved first. John tells us that he loved us first. We love him because he loved us first. We we can't be first in this relationship. And so I'm telling you right now that if you are loving others and you don't have anything in the tank or anything in the reservoir, that means you are not allowing yourself to be loved first and you have nothing to offer. And if you're not loving others, then you're not even associated with Christ. So what do we do? What do we do? First, be loved by God. Second, love what God loves, including yourself. God loves you. Receive that love. And then third, love others how you love yourself, knowing that that's how you identify as one of Jesus' followers. You cannot love until you are loved. So today, receive the love of Christ. Receive the love of God. Receive the love from yourself. Realize your value and then value others. People who do this, they're the people that everyone needs. 